When I was growing up, I hated school. I used to think that my teachers hated me. I don't know why, and I know this is a crazy place to start, but man, I could not stay in school. But I always struggled with reading, with writing, with focusing. And it wasn't until I got to high school, my senior year, that I met this one teacher. And listen guys, it was hard to get to my senior year because I got kicked out of 12 schools. So to finally make it to this point, it felt really good. But I actually met this teacher that paid attention to me. He listened to me. He used to listen to me talk about how I was gonna become a barber one day and how much I love cutting hair. And so what he did was he always made deals with me. He always told me that if I wasn't a distraction in his class, that on Monday through Thursday, that I could cut hair on Fridays. And boy, I love Fridays. I used to come in and cut my friends. I even cut him. And when I finally graduated, I enrolled into barbering school. See, in barber school, I thought just because I love to cut hair, that I was automatically going to pass the barber exam. Let me tell you about this barber exam. It's broken down into two parts. One part is the practical. See, this part, you have to cut somebody's hair live. This part, I passed this part of the test. The second part of the test is the theory of barbering. This is where you need to know all about the anatomy of the skull. You need to know the barber laws. You need to really focus and study. This part, I failed it. But see, that day, I accepted that failure. And instead of me taking the retest, I just went on and cut hair in somebody else's shop, unlicensed for over 15 years. And after having children of my own, talking to them about being their greatest, about never quitting in school, about always being their best. Because see, I believe in everybody, there's greatness. We just all have to look inside. And that day, talking to them, I really was talking to myself and I was listening to what I was saying to them. And I realized that I've been living life as a quitter all this time. And so I enrolled back into barber school, but I didn't just do it for myself. I did it for them too. And when I rolled back in, I signed up to take the exam a second time. I studied and I focused like I never did before. I took the theory first because it was the hardest part and I passed it. I took the practical and guys, you know, I passed that and see now I can actually call myself a real barber. I felt so empowered after that day, man, being a barber, it's nothing like it. You meet so many great people and you're at the beginning of a lot of people's great moments, their first day of school, their class pictures their prom, their graduation, their wedding day. And I even get called to cut people in the casket on that final moment, death. And that's hard and it never gets easy. But man, now being a licensed barber, I opened up my own barber shop. I created a safe space for my clients to come in and talk. And I listen to them. For kids to come in and talk and I listen to them. I even get called into schools for career day. And man, I get called back in to some of the worst schools. And I even got called into my school that I graduated from. I remember getting called to this one school where these kids were on their way of getting expelled because they was the biggest distraction. And I sat there for six weeks just listening to them. I earned their trust. And I even keep in contact with these students till this very day. And being a barber, guys, you meet great people. And I met this one guy who invited me out to Johannesburg, South Africa, to cut kids at an orphanage called Little Roses. I took pride in going to Little Roses, cutting those kids. I met little girls and little boys that wanted haircuts. <laughs> yeah, I said girls. I met girls nine years old to 17 years old that wanted haircuts because they wanted to look just like the boys. 
they wanted their haircuts to be fresh too. And me thinking about when I was young, how I wanted my haircut to be, I took pride in giving them my very best. My first time ever in South Africa, I found myself at a drug rehabilitation program. And guys, I never did drugs in my life. But I was in this circle listening to men tell their stories about getting off of drugs and how it was hard going back around their families because they were treated the same. They said that they were treated the same because they looked the same. And I thought that that was a great opportunity for me to share with them my gift. See, my gift of cutting hair and being a barber, guys, it changes someone's perspective of you. It changes your look. And man, I gave them my very best. And so I love cutting hair so much that I even started teaching it to children. I taught so many classes. I taught over 400 students. One of my first classes, I had a seven-year-old little girl come in. Her name is Nije. And man, Nije, she loves barbering more than I do. But I took pride in listening to Nije tell me about all the famous people that she's going to cut. <laughs> and so I had so many classes held in my barber shop that one of my most recent classes, I taught this kid named Kali. And Kali introduced me to something I knew nothing about, which was autism. See, Kali took my class to learn how to cut his cousin's hair, who was autistic. His cousin's mom said that it was hard for her to take her son to the barbershop. But now that Kali is going to cut him, he's going to stay with a fresh cut. Guys, I love teaching. I love showing students how to be creative. But I also love listening to them and learning from them as well. Man, I feel as though that we can all invest our time and our energy back into our communities and we can listen to the youth. See, I take my failures, the things that I thought that was so bad about myself, and now I use it. I use it to teach the next generation. See, sometimes it can be as easy as a pair of clippers, but we just all have to listen.